This is the 2018 Audi S5 Prestige Sportback Quattro, and it comes courtesy of our good friends at Audi Columbia. This model comes in Tango Red Metallic, also known as Candy Apple Red, and it's nicely appointed with a black leather interior. Now this model comes with a completely digitalized dashboard command center. It's really beautiful. And it also has a built-in back massager. So the entire time I've been driving today, I've been getting a back massager. That's pretty cool. This vehicle comes with a 3.0 liter engine V6, and it will go zero to 60 in just 4.5 seconds. That's fast. It packs a whopping 354 horsepower through an eight-speed automatic transmission. And it's taut suspension and confident braking rounds out this exceptional car. You can drive one of these beauties for $68,250, but this red one probably won't last long because it is a sexy car. I am Gary Pickering, and this is our new show, Brokers and Cars, Talking Contracts. Each week, we're going to ride around the town in some really cool cars, talking to some somewhat cool real estate brokers about our contract. Today, our guest is my good friend, Brad Allen, from the Art of Real Estate here on Millwood Avenue. Brad and I have been friends for eh, way too long. In fact, we even go to church together. Now, Brad has a pretty cool beard, but clearly it's not near as cool as the one I grow every year. But I'll let you guys be the judge of that. What's been going on with you guys? Not too much, man. You know, it's uh, June now, so we're just uh, trying to keep our head above water, trying to keep all my agents out of trouble, and uh, seeing a lot of contract things coming up. What so. you're seeing these days? Yeah, I mean, mainly earnest money. Yep. A lot of earnest money stuff. It's either people don't want to give it, don't want to put it down, or you know, don't want to give it back. Right. My one question we had the other day, one of my agents asked me, and I, I think I have the answer right, but like, when we write an offer, do we have to have the earnest money in our hand? Like, physically have it when we write that offer? When you your agent presents an offer with earnest money shown on the contract, you're essentially telling the other agent that you have the earnest money in hand. Right. And so if you don't have it in hand, you're basically making a misrepresentation to the other side. And the problem gets when you get that contract ratified and then it uh, does not close, the other agent's now looking for that earnest money, right. potential re uh, recovery for their client, and if you don't have it, then the agent's going to want to be the one to come out of pocket. And we actually have a case here in South Carolina where an agent was representing that she had the earnest money, she did not have the earnest money, contract did not close, uh, seller was entitled to receive the earnest money, so at that point they're turning to the agent going, you pay. And so not only did the agent have to pay, and this was a, an earnest money of, I think it was about twenty-five or $30,000, not only did she have to pay it, she also lost her license over it. So okay. yes, do not present a contract without the earnest money in your hand. Gotcha. All right, so if you don't have the earnest money in your hand, like what do you, do you not write the offer? Like, what do you do? So um, yes, you can use contract uh, paragraph 4A and 4B for that. So if you don't have the earnest money under paragraph 4A, write zero earnest money. And then under paragraph 4B, which says additional earnest money, you can put the amount of earnest money that your client's intending to put down and put how much that will be and then put the time frame in which the earnest money will be received. So a lot of agents are putting um, you know, $1,000 upon ratification of right. contract or upon completion of inspections. But you've got to be a very good agent and be sure that you are following up because if you're not following up, then the next thing you're going to, you'll be in the same situation where you're supposed to get the additional earnest money. You don't ever get it. Contract falls through. And again, now the other agent or the seller is looking for you to, to pay them the earnest money that you didn't get. Speaking of earnest money, the other day um, I, had a, I had a client that did not want to put any earnest money down for financial reasons. Mm -hmm. Like just didn't have it. But I couldn't tell the other side that. So we wrote it that they didn't, that we're not putting earnest money down. I couldn't disclose why because it's confidential. And the other broker berated me about you have to have earnest money to have a contract. You do not have to have earnest money to have a contract. The consideration um, is what she's, they're really getting at. The consideration is the promises and the obligations of the contract. So you can submit a contract with zero earnest money, particularly with a lot of these loans today, people are getting 100% financing. So they right. truly aren't putting any money in the game. So, you know, in that situation, if you have an agent that just doesn't understand, make it $10. Right. Put down ten dollars for earnest money. Um, so what I've started doing, and I know a lot of companies are starting to do it too. We're like moving away from holding earnest money. Right. Like you think that's a good idea? Yeah, I think a lot of uh, actually in Columbia we're seeing most agencies moving away from it. I think it's a bad thing that's happening, but I think it's a result of the Real Estate Commission. They have done uh, a poor job interpreting the law, and what we're seeing is some uh, bad interpretation, which is resulting in that. So what's happened now is you had a couple cases before the commission. One was a Charleston case where the broker uh, released earnest money because of VA uh, loan attempt contingency failure. And so they, they applied for VA loan, it was denied. So at that point, contracts off. So the, the broker released the earnest money without getting a signed release. Now the commission heard that case and said that, that was fine and released it. 
But then as you and I have talked about for yeah. several months now, we had another case where a broker released the money where the uh, house was under a due diligence provision, two days under due diligence. The buyer decided not to buy the house because it smelled bad and the seller was being very difficult to work with and it already refused to make any repairs. And so they canceled the con contract and released the owner's money, which is proper. And um, the commission said you can't do that without a signed release. So because of the commission having inconsistent rulings right now and no one really knowing what to do, most agencies are just completely getting out of holding earnest money and they're turning to a lawyer to hold it. So what's the law around that now? Because, I mean, obviously we have a, a law that tells us we have to hold earnest money and how we hold it. So right. if we're not holding it, what is it? So yeah, 40-57-136 is the law that pertains to releasing of earnest money. And what the commission, I don't, I don't think, got right is there's three parts of it. Part one is that when releasing an earnest money, the broker must follow the terms of the contract. And the CCRA contract did a really good job of directing where the earnest money goes. And so when a provision doesn't come, come through, it will say the money to be released, the buyer money to be released to the seller. So first thing is that the broker has to follow the terms of the contract. Gotcha. The second thing is under the, the law, it says that a broker may not release the earnest money if the earnest money is in dispute unless there's a court order, um, a sign release, or a mediation, which is what they're relying on. But the problem right. is there's an additional part of the law that says unless there's no other reasonable interpretation of the contract. And when the contract clearly says money to be released to the buyer, money to be released to the seller, there's really no other interpretation. Gotcha. Unfortunately, our commission has ruled now that earnest money just can't be released without a release. So the reason lawyers are holding the earnest money is they're not subject to 40-57-136. They're subject to that law. That law pertains to real estate agents only. So what lawyers have to be worried about is their law, which is the Supreme Court, says that a lawyer may not release money they're holding in trust if it's under dispute. Gotcha. Well, so that's a different standard. Most lawyers are simply going to ask for the sign release. Right. Other than lawyers holding it, then, right? Like, if a company doesn't want to do that, like, what are the other strategies we can do around our money? Well, there's a couple things, and, it, and neither one of them are very, very good. But one of them is just do very low earnest money. Now, obviously, if you're in a bidding process of multiple offers, that may be adverse, uh, an adverse thing for your offer, and the seller may not like that. So that's one. Second thing is when you do put earnest money down, I just go ahead and tell your buyer that due to the way the law is being interpreted, there's a good chance that um, the money's going to be in dispute and it's going to get tied up. So just go ahead and accept the fact whatever money you put down could be tied up for a while, which is, again, why you might want to do a little bit less money. And then the other strategy we're seeing, particularly up in the Greenville market, is that a lot of people are putting down uh, low earnest money or no earnest money and the additional earnest money will be paid upon completion of the due diligence. Well, that helps you get through the due diligence process so at least if the contract uh, falls through due to due diligence, your money's not tied up. It obviously is not going to cover you if you get into a situation for the loan not being approved or the house not appraising and then the seller wanting to hold the money hostage at that same time at that time rather. Gotcha. So now we're talking we're still talking about earnest money, like if it, if earnest money check bounces, like right. what, what what happens? What needs to happen? Right. And the contract says it's voidable by the seller. So the seller does not have to void the contract. The seller in fact can uh, accept the contract as being still in full force and can just ask the buyer to submit another check. It's, it's up to the seller, but there's a misunderstanding in our market. A lot of people think once the check bounces, it's automatically oh, yeah. voided. Now, keep in mind, in this hot market we're in right now, if the seller is right. looking for a reason to get out, you bounce a check, that's a pretty good reason to get out. Yeah, and I've noticed that the ones I've gotten that have been, uh, you know, not, not uh, the funds aren't there, bounced, or whatever you call it, is because they forgot to transfer the money. Because they keep right. like, a savings account, they write me a check, which if they even have a check. I mean, I'm getting so many virtual banks where these are clients are like, we don't have checks. Like, what do we do? And I'm, it's becoming so, a bigger problem yeah. because a lot of millennials do not have checking accounts yeah. or don't have checkbooks. I've had to teach people how to write checks. So let's say something happens and one company or one party needs to sue another party. Um, what, especially around holding earnest money, like what are the ramifications um, if they won't release it? So if I have to sue another company, sure. they won't release earnest So if a buyer and a seller are in dispute of earnest money and the buyer or, or seller decides to bring an action on that earnest money, the previous CCRA contract that we wrote, we, we put in there that the prevailing party would get attorney fees and court costs. And our idea was that if you're going to be unreasonable about it, you're going to be unreasonable about it at a risk because um, when you're doing that or you're refusing to release earnest money, you could find yourself in court and you could wind up paying the other uh, parties attorney fees and court costs. And that's going to be rather substantial at times. Yeah. Um, that worked for a while. Uh, agents were able to use that as kind of a, a reason to kind of push their clients to say, look, let's be reasonable in this. Um, but what we wind up doing recently in the most recent revision of the CCRE contract is we added treble damages. So. 
for example, if a seller has no reason to refuse to, to, to sign the release, he refuses to sign the release and he has no valid reason, and the buyer has to take him to court, they can get their attorney fees as well as treble damages. Now, what treble damages simply means is taking the amount of the earnest money and timesing it by three. Gotcha. So if we're holding $1,000 earnest money, the seller could wind up not only giving that money back, but it could be a total of $3,000 plus attorney fees. So gotcha. it could be very punitive. So our hope is people will be reasonable and the release the earnest money when it needs to be released. Yeah, I can tell you, since we've started having your company hold our earnest money since January, and I mean, you send somebody who picks it up a couple days a week, you take it all, close most of them but some you don't you still wire it out and it's been really helpful because I don't have to deal with trust account stuff I don't have to worry about you know the money in there and who cut it out when and all that stuff so it's been a big help to me and my company especially my agents and it's been a big help inside of writing offers and everything else because we explained to our clients with an addendum how earnest money is going to be held and how it works and how it could be in their favor and also the seller's favor because I mean it just it, it clarifies the rules on how it works and uh I think it's right. gone a long, long way. I do think buyers and sellers feel more comfortable with lawyers holding the money versus yeah. uh, an agent. Because I think a lot of them think that because the agent's holding it because they don't understand the law, that somehow the agent's going to be the one who makes the determination of who gets the money. And they simply don't want the other agent determining who gets the money. Right. I agree. All right. Well, cool, man. I appreciate your time today. I hope we answer all your questions on earnest money. Yeah. I think you knocked it out. It's awesome. uh, always been a big issue in real estate. So I'm always glad to chat about it and figure out the best ways to handle it. Well, let's, this car is pretty cool, by the way. It has a uh, built-in massage. I've been getting a massage the whole time we've been riding around, in case you hadn't noticed. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty nice. So, hey, before we go grab some lunch, I do have a question for you. Jordan and I are having this big argument in our office about what the worst song of all time is. I think it's that Jefferson Starship song, whatever their name is now, um, that says, we built this city on rock and roll. I mean, if that's rock and roll, I, it's terrible. And what crappy city did you build on that? So here's Jordan's favorite song. He says this is the worst one ever. So it's Meatloaf's. Um, I'll do anything for love, but I won't do that. <laughs> so what do you think about this dumb song? <laughs> I mean, I mean, listen to that crap. <laughs> the thing about this song is, first of all, who names himself Meatloaf? Right, that's that's right. a meal nobody wants to eat, first of all. <laughs> and then, so why would I want to listen to something I don't even like? But I'll do anything for love, but I want to do that. That's creepy. It's just creepy. What is it you won't yeah, do? He's, he's standards, man. He has standards. Yes. He will do anything except for that one thing. But what is that one thing? Uh, uh, I need to know I, I what know. that we one can, thing is. Even if we knew, I don't think we I don't think I want to know what that one thing is. <laughs> anyway. I, I know Meatloaf, like, his life expectancy stuff. And, uh, yeah, if he's not going to do it. I don't know if I'd be willing to do either. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's just creepy. I won't do that. Just keep that to yourself and don't sing a song about it. <laughs> anyway, all right, well, let's go grab some lunch. Awesome. Let's do it.